Okay, so this is a demonstration of the Mobile Digipad Pro from ePens. It's an A5 leatherette folder that's kept closed by this tongue and, and loop um, mechanism. The pen is actually stored within the folder, just on the side here. The pen's kept in place um, on by or prevented from falling out by one end the receiver unit and on the opposite end um, the actual uh, uh, cap of the pen is large enough so that it doesn't fall through the, the, the pen's uh, loop. So if we were to now just open it you'll see that the pen is on this one side and on the opposite side you have the pad and the receiver unit built into the top. So to use the, the, the folder you just have to open it and hopefully you can see because I've made this room as dark as possible um, the, the light flashing here. This light indicates that the device is, has switched itself on when you open the cover of the folder and is waiting to, to, to see a signal from the pen. So we're just going to turn it over to the page that we want and with the pen we shall write something. You'll know that it's working because the yellow, sorry, the green light that we saw a, few, a moment ago just blinks faster once it's receiving information. I'll try and show that to you again. If it's receiving information, there's an almost continuous green flashing light. Okay, and once you've finished writing your full page of A5, you just turn the clip over and it, all the lights will start flashing and that's saved. It saved your note. Now you would obviously also turn over your paper and then you're ready to start writing again. So let me just show that to you again. If I was to write something, when I turn it over, all the lights will start flashing. And that indicates that I've stored that page. Let me just do that one last time, just to make sure you saw. So we write something, and then we turn it across, and all the lights are flashing. Okay, this is a, a brand new device, and when, when it's new, you may find that uh, the receiver unit is quite stiff to turn backwards and forwards. When you do turn it backwards and forwards, you need to make sure that it's, it is actually down flat on the page. Um, so possibly just open up the folder a little bit to give it a quick bend to make sure that it's flat. Once you've used it a few times, the, the screws will actually become slightly looser, so it freely moves backwards and forwards. Okay, the other, the other LEDs that you have up here, <coughs> you have the one that's flashing green now, um, you're, you're probably not going to be able to see this on the video, but trust me, they're here. Uh, next to uh, this, this green flashing light bulb, you have a battery indicator. At the moment, it's not doing anything. It's switched off. Uh, this is a good thing. It means that the, the receiver is fully charged. Um, if it were to start flashing, uh, that indicates that you're running out of battery power and it needs to be charged up again. If it's being charged, it will actually light and it will turn red. Let me just plug it into a USB to show you that. Okay, so hopefully now you'll be able to see that this green light also has a red flashing light next to it. Uh, this indicates that the, 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 the receiver is charging. Uh, once it's fully charged, it will, the light will switch off even with the USB plugged in. So, oh, let me just pull that out now. The last LED we have on the end here is a Bluetooth LED. So at the moment it's switched off to indicate that Bluetooth isn't active. But on the top of the unit, you just have a single button. If you were to press that for about three seconds, that would switch the Bluetooth on. So that should now become a white flashing light alongside the green one to indicate that Bluetooth is switched on. Now also on the top of the unit here, you have the reset button. 
it's very small but you just if if you have a problem if you've noticed a problem if the receiver unit isn't storing the information correctly if the lights aren't flashing correctly and so on you just need to insert a, a drawing pin or a safety clip or something along those lines into this hole on the back and that will then just reset uh, the, the hardware. When you come to register the device you'll be asked for the serial number. You'll find the serial number on the back of the receiver just underneath the ePens logo. The pad of paper can be replaced. You simply need to pull this pad out and then insert in another one into the same place. It should fit just about any A5 pad. We recommend getting one that's bound in the centre and preferably has the last page uh, being card. So when you slide it in um, it, will, it will be a firmer fit rather than just using a few sheets of paper. I think that's pretty much all I have to say but if you have any questions uh, please just drop me a, a message and I'll try and respond as quickly as possible.